Hello everyone, and welcome to this year's Up and Coming Lawyers Leaders in the Law event presented by the Wisconsin Law Journal. I'm Sarah Zenz, event manager at the Wisconsin Law Journal, and I wanna thank you for joining us today to honor 13 up and coming rock stars in the legal field, as well as eight leaders in the law who have paved the way for those building their career. We wish we could be honoring this great group in person, but since that's still not quite possible, we're glad you could join us online to recognize and celebrate 21 awesome individuals. Yeah, this event is one of many examples of adapting to the challenges brought on by COVID-19. I'm Michaela Pauchner, legal reporter at the Wisconsin Law Journal. The Law Journal used to hold separate events for the up and coming lawyers and leaders in the law. But last year, we began to take a different look at our events with an emphasis on bringing people together and sharing some inspiration during isolating and difficult times. And who better to share advice with up and coming lawyers than Wisconsin's leaders in the law? Today's event is about sharing knowledge and experiences while coming together as a group, honoring the people who have not only persevered through unprecedented times, but also excelled. So congratulations to all of our award winners and thank you for your commitment to Wisconsin's legal community. We'll introduce you to our award honorees in a bit, but in the meantime, some housekeeping items. First off, it's important to note that Michaela and I are both fully vaccinated, so that's why we're able to be here in person celebrating these exceptional law professionals. You'll see a chat feature on your right-hand side of the screen. Please use it generously to celebrate your honoree and congratulate this year's other honorees. Also, stories on our honorees you meet today will be featured in our monthly Law Journal magazine, which will be will publish in the April edition due in the coming days. For the honorees today, hopefully most of you have your awards already and they are displayed proudly at your home office or at work. We also hope the honorees enjoyed a special celebratory gift, which we hope you drink responsibly, but make sure to pop those bubblies in your respective bubbles. If you haven't received your award and gift yet, it will be arriving at your business or home address in the coming days, so please keep an eye out for those. Also, today's event wouldn't be possible without the overwhelming support from our sponsors. We couldn't continue to hold these virtual events and soon in-person events without them. Many of these sponsors have been longtime champions of the Wisconsin Law Journal events, and we truly appreciate their support. Thank you to our sponsors, Godfrey and & Kahn and Quarles and & Brady. And now, let's meet these outstanding group of honorees. First, Let's meet this year's up and coming lawyers. Anita Bohr, a senior associate in the Quarles and Brady Madison office, has established herself with both colleagues and clients as someone who is highly skilled at negotiating and litigating complex intellectual property and technology cases. Representing clients across multiple industries, her primary focus is on patent, trademark, and trade secret disputes. She has litigated cases in many federal district and appellate courts the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board, and arbitration tribunals, such as the World Intellectual Property Organization. She has also served as a core member with Teach for America in Houston and worked on the Teach for America staff in Milwaukee, and frequently represents pro bono clients on civil rights matters. Congratulations, Anita. Let's meet our next up-and-coming lawyer. Jay Cray is part of Godfrey & Kahn's corporate law and startups and venture capital practice groups. Jay's passion for his profession is exemplified through his leadership in the Milwaukee startup community. With roles on boards and committees of organizations like the Milwaukee Startup Coalition, the Milwaukee Tech Hub, and advising on the formation of Alchemy Angels, Jay has become an invaluable resource to emerging growth companies in the community. He also volunteers at the Milwaukee Justice Center's Mobile Legal Clinic where lawyers provide brief legal advice to area residents on family law, landlord-tenant issues, small and large claims, and credit consumer issues. Congratulations, Jay. And now for our next honoree. Evan Darris is a bright and motivated corporate and mergers and acquisitions attorney who devotes most of her time at Godfrey & Kahn to sophisticated transactional work involving domestic and cross-border transactions for publicly traded and privately held companies and private equity groups. Evan has a keen intellect, positive attitude, 
and a willingness to go the extra mile, a true team player. Her clear and effective communication style quickly gains the confidence of clients. She also serves on the firm's recruiting committee and as an extension of her efforts, has taken the initiative to be a mentor to newer attorneys. She is a role model for early success at the firm and wants to help others with their path to success. Congratulations, Evan. And now for our next up and coming lawyer. Before becoming a Hupe and Abraham attorney, Hannah Dockendorf was previously lead law clerk at the firm, as well as an intern for both the Equal Rights Division and Catholic Charities Immigration Services. Using her law education to give back to the community, she was also a legal volunteer at both the Milwaukee Justice Center and the Marquette University Volunteer Legal Clinic. With demonstrated experience in personal injury and probate law, she now assists clients with personal injury matters. Her sense of commitment to her clients is unmatched. She goes to great lengths to compassionately counsel clients with the utmost care, while simultaneously advocating for those clients with exceptional tenacity. Congratulations, Hannah. And now for our next honoree. Attorney Tracy Mern is no stranger to breaking down barriers and making a positive impact on the legal community and the community at large. She is an attorney at Axley's Waukesha office, practicing in the areas of real estate, land use, municipal estate planning, and general business law. Her list of clients is extensive, largely due to her incredible ability to generate new business almost anywhere. When she isn't mentoring younger associates, she serves as a UPAF Westside cabinet member and a frequent volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association. Her positive, gregarious personality is infectious and makes her highly valued by coworkers and clients alike. In addition, she has an impressive legal skill set and intense dedication to match that personality. Congratulations, Tracy. Now let's congratulate our next honoree. Catherine Pfefferly joined Boardman Clark in May 2016 as a law clerk in the summer clerkship program. She quickly showed her abilities in litigation and beyond. Since becoming an attorney in 2017, Catherine has demonstrated that she is incredibly dedicated. She has assumed a considerable degree of responsibility as a trial lawyer in an unusually short period of time. She practices primarily in the areas of insurance and real estate litigation. She also has prioritized a commitment to pro bono work, including taking three pro bono appointments from the District Court of the Western District of Wisconsin. It is intrinsically important for her to do this work, and she does not take lightly her responsibility to help others when they are in need. Congratulations, Catherine. Let's meet our next honoree. As a Milwaukee-based senior associate in the Quarles and Brady Business Law Practice Group, Matt Petruzak has established himself as someone who provides more than just legal counsel to his clients. He has the knowledge and insight to be a business partner on a variety of complex projects. He has become the firm's go-to attorney for clients seeking assistance in reviewing startup investments, able to clearly explain what to expect at each stage of an opportunity. He is a member of the Wisconsin Startup Coalition, which is devoted to advancing Wisconsin's innovation ecosystem for startup founders. Matt knows the right questions to ask and is equally willing to share his perspective with others. Congratulations, Matt. Let's meet our next up and coming lawyer. Since Isaiah Ritchie started with Schlamer Law Firm, he has become not only an asset to the firm, but also to the community. Isaiah serves on the boards of a local pregnancy crisis center, a downtown business revitalization organization, and the County Economic Development Corporation. He is also active in his church worship ministry. In his legal work, Isaiah has shown a passion in advocating for children and mentally disabled individuals through his work as a guardian ad litem. Isaiah is quick to take on any responsibility required and has expanded his practice areas from real estate planning and transactional work to now include municipal law, property law, guardianship law, and an increasing interest in appellate practice. Congratulations, Isaiah. And now for our next honoree. Soap and Shaw has established a reputation for excellence in appellate practice, based on her award-winning legal writing and persuasive oral advocacy in Wisconsin and beyond. 
At Perkins Coie, she has represented clients in the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Courts of Appeal for the 9th, 8th, 7th, 4th, 2nd, and D.C. circuits, and the Wisconsin, New Hampshire, and Washington Supreme Courts. She devoted much of last year to litigating emergency voting rights cases leading up to the primary and presidential elections in Wisconsin, South Carolina, and other states. She also writes and speaks frequently on topics of interest to the profession and makes time to get involved in her community and work on other social causes. Congratulations, Sopin. And now for our next up-and-coming lawyer. Growing up in a family business, Benjamin Struckert was intrigued from an early age with the prospect of helping business owners and managers find practical solutions to the problems that keep them up at night. At Reuter Ware, Ben does just that, counseling family-owned and closely held businesses in entity formation, corporate governance, commercial contracts, and other day-to-day -day transactional matters. He assists clients with a broad range of business sale and acquisition, reorganization, and corporate finance transactions. He also advises banks, bank holding companies, and other financial institutions on various issues. Through it all, he demonstrates an impressive ability to provide legal services of the highest quality and efficiency. Congratulations, Benjamin. And now for our next honoree. Jennifer Tate joined Jones Law Firm after serving as a city attorney in Milwaukee and being an assistant district attorney in Milwaukee County. She has prosecuted and defended all types of criminal matters, including homicides, sexual assaults, drug cases, and child abuse matters. Over the course of her career, she has shown herself to be a zealous and compassionate attorney, resulting in being a formidable advocate and highly respected. Jennifer has conducted dozens of trials, resulting in several favorable verdicts. She possesses highly developed trial skills and is most comfortable advocating for clients in front of juries. In the future, Jennifer looks forward to further developing her burgeoning reputation and practice. Congratulations, Jennifer. Let's meet our next honoree. Scott Thompson's career began in public affairs and as an environmental political organizer, then transitioned into a career in the law. He worked in the Wisconsin Innocence Project, seeking to correct the ultimate injustice, wrongful conviction. In 2014, he joined Jingris Thompson & Walks as a law clerk. He is not only an amazing lawyer, but he is a phenomenal mentor. Representing people all over Wisconsin who have been treated unfairly, he truly cares about each and every one of his clients and makes it a point to get to know them. Scott works above and beyond the hours of duty to make sure nothing is missed and every client is represented to his full potential. His work ethic is like no other, and he is a force to be reckoned with. Congratulations, Scott. And now for our final up-and-coming lawyer. As a member of Foley & Lardner's Environmental Regulation Practice Group, Hilary Vedvig plays a key role helping clients on matters related to regulatory compliance, litigation, transactional matters, and corporate governance. Her passion for environmental law can be seen in her work helping clients navigate the complex regulations pertaining to climate change and sustainability. Hillary is also committed to using her skills and talents to achieve social justice. She played a direct role in the firm launching a racial justice and equity practice group. This pro bono practice provides a more focused and coordinated approach by the firm when it takes on projects impacting racial justice and equality. Congratulations, Hillary. And congratulations again to all of our up and coming lawyers. Now I'd like to introduce our 2021 leaders in the law. These names will likely be familiar to you. These are people who made history in the Wisconsin Supreme Court, founded practices known across the country, and most importantly, helped thousands of clients in the pursuit of justice. Please help me congratulate our leaders in the law. C. Frederick Geilfus has excelled at building a health law practice that has paralleled Foley and Lardner's emergence nationally as a leading provider of healthcare law services. He has applied his legal skills on many fronts within the healthcare industry, counseling health systems, hospitals, medical clinics, rehabilitation agencies, 
nursing homes, and other healthcare providers on general operational concerns, regulatory, and business matters. He is also very active in the community, serving as volunteer chair or president of several organizations. Some examples include University School of Milwaukee, Mequon Nature Preserve, Grand Avenue Club, the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts, and Curative Care Network and its foundation. Congratulations, Frederick. Let's meet our next leader in the law. Robert Jingris works tirelessly on behalf of his clients to level the playing field for the underdog. He is the founding partner of Jingris, Thompson & Walks. His practice focuses on class action litigation, personal injury, professional malpractice, products liability, civil rights, and employment law. Robert has litigated numerous cases involving complex litigation in both state and federal court. His calm demeanor and sharp mind are an asset to his clients, as a leader in the firm, and in his field. While the majority of Robert's cases have been litigated in state and federal courts in Dane County, Robert has led his firm toward growth, which serves to reach even more clients across the state of Wisconsin. Congratulations, Robert. Let's meet our next honoree. Paul Kinney of Jingris Thompson & Walks has always loved to argue. So after completing his undergraduate education, he enrolled in UW-Madison Law School. Graduating in 1993, he has been fighting for the underdog ever since, focusing on civil rights, class action litigation, employment law, legal malpractice, personal injury, product liability, and nursing home negligence and abuse. Helping people in need has always motivated Paul, taking pride in giving a voice to people who otherwise would be silenced by the system. And it's not just clients. As a mentor and colleague, he is always willing to share his knowledge. Residing in Middleton, he also serves on the school board and on the personnel committee for his church. Congratulations, Paul. Let's meet our next leader in the law. Kevin Long is an invaluable asset to Quarles and Brady, establishing a stellar reputation as a litigation and dispute resolution attorney, as an advisor committed to the success of his clients, as a colleague always willing to help those around him, as a mentor devoted to the development and success of younger attorneys, and as a leader representing the firm throughout the Milwaukee community. With a civil engineering background, Kevin approaches his practice with precision and discipline evaluating legal matters by developing a thorough understanding of the client's business. As Milwaukee office co-managing partner, he is highly motivated and selfless, and highly regarded for his work ethic and creativity as a leader. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank the Wisconsin Law Journal for sponsoring these awards. They're important. Uh, uh, the profession of, of law is an important profession and one that I'm proud to be a member of. And I appreciate the Wisconsin Law Journal focusing on the importance of our industry and, uh, and each of you, um, the honorees tonight, congratulations for uh, everything that you've achieved in your careers. I've been asked to just say a few words about, uh, about the practice of law. I believe it's a blessing and a privilege for each of us. Uh, unlike uh, other professions, it's one in which we take an oath. When we all began our careers in Wisconsin or elsewhere, we took an oath to support the constitutions of the United States and our respective states, the state of Wisconsin, and to represent our clients uh, in the highest regard. And it's something that separates our profession from others and something that I would encourage folks to, to take a look at from time to time. I know I have, and it's helped, uh, helped uh, to keep me focused on what's important in the practice. Uh, we're lucky to, to be able to practice law because it combines a number of different uh, elements uh, that are, are positive, positive human conduct. It's principle, it's cerebral, it involves thinking, it involves competition, whether we're negotiating the best deal we can or, uh, or advocating for our clients uh, in a court or other tribunal. There's a competitive aspect to it. It requires some some level of performance, whether we're communicating with our clients, advocating a case or otherwise. And it also requires us to be women and men for others. Uh, 
being, being men and women for others is an Ignatian principle. While many of us uh, that practice law in the state of Wisconsin are proud graduates of the University of Wisconsin Law School. Many others like myself uh, were educated at Marquette, which uh, uh, definitely uh, focused on Ignatian principles. And I've always thought that the principle of being women and men for others is one that's particularly applicable to, um, to the practice of law. We are of course, uh, uh, men and women for others when we advocate for our clients, when we are confidants for our clients, and when we, when we communicate with them. We are also, however, men and women for others when we stand up for each other as lawyers, when we play our role in the judicial system and, and respect the role that our adversaries and others play within that system. And then, almost importantly, as colleagues, as fellow members of the bar, we are men and women for others, uh, regardless of which firm you, you work at, uh, you will benefit from the work of the folks who have gone before you. I work at uh, Quarles and Brady and I'm very happy to do so. And I owe a debt of gratitude each and every day to the lawyers who came before me at Quarles and built the firm that I'm lucky enough to work for now. So I thank them specifically uh, uh, at this time. And uh, I also recognize that that's an important part of the practice of law. Um, people who generally become lawyers have done well in high school. They've done well in standardized tests. They've done well in college. They've done well in entrance examinations to get into law school. And generally they've done pretty well in law school. So there's a lot of talent involved in those folks. And I think the organizations that each of us are part of are really a continuation of the development and nurturing of that talent. It is not a mistake that many lawyers become leaders in their faith organizations, in their community organizations, and even in the political realm. And I think it's important for us to always remember that, that as much as we are focused on doing our part and making sure that we're uh, um, carrying our weight, we also have part of that weight is our obligations to each other to help get the most out of each other. Um, as obviously those around you, around the awardees tonight, the honorees tonight, I have been supported by many others. Don't forget to thank them. And I thank you for, uh, I thank those around me for all the support they've given me. Thank you and congratulations. Congratulations, Kevin. And now for our next honoree. Douglas Ross has the important duty of essentially running Hupy and Abraham's Wausau office. His humble and kind nature has endeared him to the staff of the firm and is infectious to his co-workers. He has tirelessly represented over 1,000 Northern Wisconsinites. When Doug takes on a client, they know almost immediately that he will be 100% focused on helping them put their lives back together. As a lifelong resident of North Central Wisconsin, he shows his love for the community by his involvement in youth coaching and volunteer work, and is involved in various organizations such as the Wisconsin Association for Justice, Marathon County Bar Association, Civil Trial Council of Wisconsin, and the Million Dollar Advocates Forum. Congratulations, Douglas. Let's meet our next leader in the law. Kelly Thompson began her career with the Wisconsin State Public Defender's Office in 1996, working first as an intern while attending law school. After her first day, she knew she had found her career path. It was the connection with people and the opportunity to provide a voice for defendants that solidified her decision to make a career in the Public Defender's Office. She worked in the SPD's Milwaukee office from 1996 to 2001. After a brief time working in public relations and government, she returned to the organization in 2003 and was appointed as state public defender in 2011. Since then, she has led the office through hiring and retention decisions, funding questions, and more, always ensuring her staff has the resources they need. I want to thank the Wisconsin Law Journal for this award. I am so appreciative of it. And while I have the honor of accepting it. I'm accepting this on behalf of all public defenders throughout the state of Wisconsin who work tirelessly on behalf of this agency, our clients, and the communities around Wisconsin. Congratulations to the up-and-coming lawyer honorees on your well-deserved awards. Thank you for your commitment to your clients and to this profession. No matter what kind of law you practice, it can be very, very difficult. Just remember, you have the opportunity to make a positive impact on someone's life every single day. People around you are there to support and advise you. 
They're there to celebrate your wins and ease your losses. In the Public Defender's Office, we recognize that we have to define success differently. It may be going to trial. It may be winning a motion hearing. It may be getting a case dismissed or getting someone into the right program. It may be just telling that individual's story. But what we can all count on is treating everyone with dignity and respect that we encounter in the criminal justice system. You are all honoring one of the nation's fundamental principles of ensuring due process for people in the justice system. This is so important for individuals throughout Wisconsin and throughout our nation. So today, I thank you for all that you do. Congratulations, Kelly. And now for our final leader in the law. Todd Weir of Achen, Van Ert, and Weir has been a pillar in the legal community for more than 40 years. His trial practice has included successfully trying scores of complex medical negligence cases to verdict in counties throughout the state of Wisconsin. These have included cases on behalf of hospitals and physicians involving a wide variety of medical issues and theories of liability. He is a mentor to many in the medical malpractice community. He is a lawyer's lawyer with the very highest of skill, integrity, and the will to do the right thing. He repeatedly stands up for the legal community as far as the public's perception of attorneys and strives to change the public misperception of the profession in every way he can. Congratulations, Todd. Congratulations, and thank you to our honorees for giving your time and talents throughout your careers to mentor the next generations of leaders and shape Wisconsin's legal system. Among the people who have been integral to shaping Wisconsin's legal system is our 2021 Lifetime Achievement Award winner. This is a woman who dedicated herself to public service and made history in the process. Please join us in honoring the life and legal career of Wisconsin Supreme Court Chief Justice Shirley Abrahamson. Former Wisconsin Supreme Court Chief Justice Shirley Abrahamson, known for her intellect and work habits, left behind a legacy that continues to shape courts in Wisconsin and throughout the country. Her career was one of many firsts and milestones. In 1976, she became the first woman to serve on the Wisconsin Supreme Court and in 1996, the court's first female Chief Justice. She is the longest serving justice in the state, dedicating 43 years of her career to the High Court. In a two volume encyclopedia of the 100 greatest jurists in US history, Abrahamson is listed among the likes of John Marshall, Oliver Wendell Holmes, and other pillars of America's legal system. Her legacy extends across state lines and goes beyond her years on the Wisconsin Supreme Court while furthering the fight for equality and justice. Describing her as a justice, I think I can do no better in answering that question than referring to what uh, former United States Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said about Shirley in June of 2019, when at the state capitol, there was a retirement celebration for Shirley and uh, by video, uh, Justice Ginsburg appeared and um, said this about Shirley, and I just think it's dynamite. She said, among jurists I have encountered in the United States and abroad, Shirley Abrahamson is the very best, the most courageous and sage, the least least self-regarding. And when I um, first saw that, and it was sent to me uh, before it was played, I thought to myself, that had to be a statement that was really written or carefully edited by Justice Ginsburg, because as a public official, we always modify things to say one of the best or among the best. But uh, Justice Ginsburg, who was a friend of uh, Shirley Abrahamson, Chief Justice Shirley Abrahamson, um, you know, has been around and seen a lot of jurists. So for her to make that comment, certainly for me, uh, was rather compelling. She went on to say that uh, she has inspired legions to follow in her way, to strive constantly to make the legal system genuinely equal 
and accessible to all. So I think that's a great description uh, that you ask about in terms of her as a justice. As a friend, um, clearly uh, Shirley Abrahamson was more than a colleague. She was a dear friend of mine. And I consider it my good fortune to have worked with her on the Wisconsin Supreme Court for 24 years. Um, and as a friend, she was generous. She was self-sacrificing. She had a great wit um, and was fun. While at the same time, there were uh, she was very serious and intense also. Um, her, you know, her intellect and uh, her work ethic are, are legendary. But there were also other things about Shirley that I would often estimate, quality, un underestimate rather, qualities that I um, uh, didn't really believe she had. Here's an example. Um, I grew up playing pool, pool table, you know. So we were at a holiday gathering for all of the staff of the court system. And the location where we had that gathering, there was a pool table. Well, I thought it would entertain some of the staff to see us play. And I uh, uh, figured I could kind of, uh, not kind of, that I would just clean her clock. You know, <laughs> I mean, Shirley Abrahamson playing pool. Are you kidding? I grew up playing pool. Well. Apparently, certainly unknown to me, she had learned to play pool while she was studying for her LLM at the University of Wisconsin Law School. She had a colleague there who played pool, and so she became an, a pool shark. And I, in great dismay, uh, lost resoundingly for that pool game. Another instance, Shirley. I mean, Shirley was far from an avid sportswoman. And yet uh, she won up in Manaqua. There's an annual musky fishing contest. And Shirley was there one year entered and darned if she didn't win it. So there's a, there's a, a lot, a complex uh, description that you can give from Shirley all the way to uh, fun, to serious and intense and things in between. And I think of Shirley's legacy really as a um, testament to uh, of instruction, a testament for mentoring. And even though she has now passed, as I say, to the other side of life, um, uh, certainly her legacy leaves a lot for us to learn from. I know one of her favorite quotes was that Martin Luther King quote, uh, that deals with the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But she would always add to that a caveat that it only bends that way if we are steadfast in our commitment to equality and justice. So I think the fight always continues. There may be naysayers or along the way or setbacks that we encounter, but that long arc, the moral universe does, does bend towards justice as long as we stay committed to the values which really have encompassed her tenure on the court and her career. I would just follow along the, that advice. Don't give up. Don't let the naysayers uh, prevail. It, it, it's a long journey, but you have to continue with your commitment um, to the goals that you believe in. Um, you know, never let anyone take your joy. Every most mornings, perhaps I'd like to say every morning, but most mornings, I have a morning meditation. And I start that morning meditation with these words, may I embrace this day with joy. And um, that's what I would hope that others also focus on. Doesn't mean that it's always easy. It isn't always easy. But joy comes from also um, a commitment to the values and to a system of justice in which you deeply believe. And that works for me and I hope it works for them. 
Thank you, Justice Bradley, for sharing that advice and your memories of Chief Justice Abrahamson with us. It is my hope that all of us watching right now can find one way today to strengthen our commitment to equality and justice in our communities and our state. Chief Justice Abrahamson and the rest of our honorees have certainly shown us how. Congratulations again to this year's winners, and I'll turn it back over to you, Sarah. And thank you again to this year's sponsors, Godfrey and Khan and Quarles and Brady. Also, big thank you to Jeff Everts of Everts Video. He and the Wisconsin Law Journal video specialist, Rick Benedict, are responsible for all the videos you saw today. Speaking of, all of today's vi videos will be available on our website at wislawjournal.com in the coming days. And finally, a special thank you to all in attendance today. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to celebrate this great group of men and women. We hope you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you at our in-person events very, very soon. If you are interested in networking with these amazing up and coming lawyers and leaders in the law, please stick around. We have emailed you a link to the Zoom networking meeting, which can also be found in the chat box and in the description below in YouTube. Have a great rest of your day and hope to see you at the networking portion.